All right, guys, uh, our fourth fourth practice in a row here. Good, good, uh, good set. You know, we kind of take these four these four day increments, uh, and then that's kind of our cycle: four days of practice, then a day off. Um, I thought we finished strong, really spirited practice, good tempo, good pace. You know, we're really looking for execution at a high level. We're looking for improvements. You know, reduce the mental errors that come at the beginning of camp. Feel like feel like you're seeing that. Um, Special teams, I thought, looked good. Punt team out there today, you know, really just um, the, the special teams is an interesting dynamic in with these no preseason games. And so, you know, we're talking a lot about that, making sure we're ready there. I just think that presents some unique opportunities for us as a team um, to really step up our game special teams wise in the preparation for the season without getting preseason game reps. So just putting a real emphasis on that. Bubba's doing a great job. And, uh, you know, the guys the guys have been great, you know, working to get better, having fun out there competing. So, um, you know, they'll, they'll get a day off and, and then we'll get back at it. All right, George Bremer, you want to start us off? <clears throat> Coach, uh, we haven't seen Sheldon Day out there at all. I didn't know, did you have any update on, on what his situation is? No update. Um, you know, the knee, the knee um, injury was going to take a little bit yet. Um, it's going to take a little bit, but he's progressing nicely, you know, and, um, but it's probably, probably going to be uh, a little bit. Phil B. I didn't know I had one on the queue. So uh, I guess I wanted to ask you about Taekwon Lewis. Um, uh, another decent day for him. I, I, I don't want to read too much into three days of camp, but, do you acknowledge that maybe a sense of urgency in a guy like that who's trying to prove he belongs after being hurt so much? Uh, no, I think he definitely is set out to you know, prove something. You know, we picked him with a high pick. Um, every player, every player wants to contribute. Every player wants to live up to the expectations. Taekwon's got great character. He's got great athleticism. And you're exactly right, Phil. I mean, he's had three really good days. I mean. He's, a, he's looked strong every day in pads, looks fast and explosive. Physically, he looks better than he's, he's ever looked since he's been here. So very excited about that. Um, it's a very short uh, window here. And so we all know this is a long haul and he needs to continue to do what he's been doing these three days. And if he does, that's going to be good for him and it's going to be good for us because he's looked exceptionally good. Thank you. Oh, Joel Erickson. Frank, uh, I know you guys had Chase McLaughlin there at the end of the season last year. What did you learn about just his approach, and what have you learned about Rodrigo just from the first little bit of time you've had with him? Yeah, I mean, I think Chase is a pretty cool customer. You know, um, I think he's a cool customer. I think that the two of them are really different styles. I've been around both styles of kickers. I think Chase is a little bit more um, – I don't know what the right word for it is you know, not as regimented about certain things. Um, you know, just more of a, hey, just put it anywhere. I'm good. I can make it. Kicked with the guy, uh, Steve Christie, who was a real good kicker in Buffalo. I held for him. He was kind of like that. Um, and then on the other hand, you know, I think Rod is, you know, re very regimented, disciplined about his approach, very technical in every little thing. Um, that's good too. They're, they're both unique styles. I think they're different. I've been around guys like that as well. Um, they've both done well in the kicking competition and uh, plenty more of that to come here over the next couple of weeks. Okay, uh, Fox 59. Hey coach, a uh, little off topic, but uh, Indy 500 this weekend, I'm sure from your time here in central Indiana, you've developed a little bit of a passion for, for that race. So uh, can you, can you speak to that? I guess how it's grown maybe a little bit on you and if you're uh, rooting for anyone in particular. Um, yeah, no, I, I have been a little bit, you know, before I got to Indy, well, I lived in Charlotte. Um, I lived in Charlotte for 13 years. So there I, I kind of began a little bit of a, of a bug for, for race for race car driving. I wouldn't say I was ever a huge, you know, hugely into it, but really got to be down in pit row several times, get an up close look, meet some of the drivers and crew chiefs and so forth, been in some of the garages and then come here to Indy. And, uh, you know, you think you're in Charlotte, you're at one great race city and then you come to Indy and 
you know, it's just another great race city. So um, we, my family and I have tried to take advantage of it when we can, um, not rooting for anyone in particular in the race, but um, certainly respect and appreciate um, the talent, you know, the talent and the teamwork that goes into, you know, successful race teams. Um, that was the one thing I learned, I think, the most from being around just really incredible teamwork and talent. Mike Chappell. Coach, we talked to Malik Cooker earlier, and he mentioned there was a moment in a team meeting where you guys were running the highlights, and you showed his interception of Philip Rivers. What, did, did Rivers sort of have a reaction that you guys were rubbing it in, or was it just sort of this is what this guy can do? How did that – can you remember the situation? Yeah, yeah, I don't – no, I remember showing the play, but I don't remember the exact – I can't remember which day it was. No, I think it was just, I think it was just early on. And, yeah, I, no, there was no we, – we know it's part of it. It's part of what Malik does. I mean, he's got – he's great in center field there and very instinctive. And, you know, that particular play that he made against Phillip last year um, was a great play and indicative of the kind of talent and ball hawking skills that he has. So, Phillip has great respect for Malik. You know, he's, he's kind of seen him going up against him and, you know, now getting to go against him in practice yesterday – you know, I showed a play uh, to the team yesterday that Malik made a, a, a really, really good PBU he had yesterday out on the practice field that when I was in the quarterback room, you know, both Jacoby and Phillip were like, wow, now that was that was a big time PBU right there. So um, Malik's really, really looked good. Uh, physically looks good, you know, making plays in practice. So feel feel great about where he's at right now. Thanks, nice Coach. Okay, two more, Kevin Bowen. Frank, I know um, back in the spring you talked about Jacoby, maybe a five to seven play package. Is that something that you're still exploring? And I guess what factors will you have to weigh of if you use it, when you use it? Yeah, we are, you know, Nick and I are talking about it quite a bit. Um, talked to Jacoby about it a little bit the other day. You know, not a great length. And, you know, it's hard. I've never... Um, I, it's very intriguing to it's very intriguing to me. I've never done that before as a coordinator or as a head coach. I've never been on a team that's done it. Um, so, but we're we're working through it. It, it would be a big step, but um, if if we think it's going to be right for the team, then then we'll do it. Um, you know, it'd be a unique situation. I, I I do think you know when you got a what we consider a future Hall of Fame quarterback, you, you think, well, it's hard to take him off the field. But, you know, you look at what the Saints have done. Um, and not that we have the exact same dynamic. I mean, Jacoby's and, and Taysom Hill are, are different type of players. But um, Jacoby's a really good player. And there's, a, there's certain ways that we think that we could use him. Um, if, if we think those ways are going to help us win football games, um, then we'll be open to doing that. All right, and last question, Wish TV. Hey, Coach, you mentioned things have been spirited at practice now that things have gone semi-live. Uh, in your opinion, the best battle so far or competition? Mm. I'll tell you what, the uh, you know, the one-on-one -on -one drills between the O-line and the D-line have been really fun to watch, you know, the, the pass rush drills. So just – great intensity and effort and physicality um you know and they're very competitive they're very competitive and you know i just i mentioned that to the team the other day that those one-on-ones whether it's o-line versus d-line or wide receivers versus dbs or linebackers versus running backs those drills are really important um, to the development of a player so i think that's what's some of that's been the most fun to watch so far since we've been in pads and, and been near near live. 